signpost number seven. Oh, g'day boys and girls. Welcome back to the journey through the Bible with Adventure Andrew. I'm looking for signpost number seven. This is a really exciting signpost because this one is the solution to all the problems that have happened in the journey so far. Signpost number seven is called Christ and Cross. I need your help again to find this sign. You ready to call it out for me? Where is signpost number seven? It is right there. Thank you so much for all your help. Signpost number seven is called Christ and Cross. This signpost is the most important one. It's about the true prophet, the true priest, and the true king, the greatest of all. It is about Christ. Now hear this name, Christ. The name Christ means anointed one. Kings were anointed with oil. Prophets were anointed with oil and priests were anointed with oil. But this Christ, he is the greatest anointed one of all. Who is Christ? This is the Lord Jesus. Now the Lord Jesus, he is God. He is what we call the second member of the Holy Trinity, the Son of God. He has always been around. In our journey through the Bible, he has appeared on a few occasions. He appeared to Moses at the burning bush. He was in the fiery furnace with Daniel's friends. He has appeared throughout the Old Testament. Now we're going to learn about the time God sent him down from heaven and he became a human being. He was still God, but he was also a human being, truly God and truly man. What happened was God chose a lady by the name of Mary, and she was chosen to be the one who would give birth to the Son of God. An angel appeared to her and told her this, that he will sit on the throne of his father David. He will be the king, and he will rule, and he will bring salvation to many people. The time finally came when Mary gave birth to this child. And during this time, angels appeared to some shepherds in a field far away. The angels told these shepherds that there is glory to God in the highest, peace on earth among those with whom God is greatly pleased. They made a great announcement that there is a saviour that has been born, a saviour, a rescuer, not like the judges in the Old Testament who rescued the people, but the people still sinned. A true saviour has come. Well, there was a beautiful night when this family gathered. Joseph and Mary held this little baby who was actually the king of heaven. When we read the Bible, we learn that he grew up. He grew in his size, he grew in his intelligence, but he grew in favour with God. Jesus began to grow. The time came when he was around 30 years old that he began his public ministry. Here's something very interesting, boys and girls. Did you know a priest would start his service when he was 30? Israel's greatest king, David, was 30 years old when he became king. And also the great prophet Ezekiel was 30 years old when he began his prophetic ministry. Prophet, priests and kings, 30 years, Jesus began his public ministry at around the age of 30. And Jesus, when he went around, lived a righteous life. That means he never, ever sinned. And one of the reasons why this is very important for us to know is Jesus is obeying all God's commands, all the commands that you and I have failed to obey. And throughout his ministry, Jesus had many words and works that proved that he is God. Among many of these 
uh, words of Jesus, Jesus would say things like, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the true vine. When Jesus said these things, he was reminding the people that he is God and because he's God, he can do great things. But he also proved that he was God by his works. Jesus did many miracles. The book of John gives us seven of these great signs that Jesus did. The very first miracle that Jesus did was at a wedding. Now, at this wedding, Jesus did something that nobody else could do. He turned water into wine. Wow, that would have been so amazing. Only Jesus could do that. He was powerful. Jesus did many other miracles throughout his ministry. Let me tell you about another one he did. Another great miracle that Jesus did was after one day he was sitting down and there was a huge crowd of people. There were over 5,000 men and that didn't even include the women and the children. This huge crowd was listening to Jesus preach. But the people were hungry. Uh, they had nowhere to go to get food. And the disciples were beginning to ask Jesus, what do we do with the crowds? After a while, one of the disciples by the name of Andrew, not Adventure Andrew, the disciple Andrew, he found a young boy who brought his lunch. He brought it to Jesus and it didn't really have too much in it. He opened it up and inside was five small loaves of bread and also two fish. This was really meant for the boy. This is what his mum packed for him that day. But Jesus did something that only God could do. Jesus took this small meal and he prayed over it. He blessed it and then he told his disciples to share it with the people. And you know what happened? The food began to multiply and it was enough to feed every single person in that crowd. There was even leftovers. Jesus then told his disciples to collect all of the leftovers. And you know what we are told? there were 12 baskets filled with the leftover food. The fact that there were 12 baskets and 12 disciples was a reminder for all of them individually that Jesus is God and he can provide. After a few years of our Lord's public ministry, the time came where Jesus would die. This was always God's plan. God had taught his people in the Old Testament stories that if his people are going to be forgiven of their sins, they need to perfectly obey God's law, but there must also be a sacrifice for their sins. The time came where Jesus was betrayed by Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples. He was handed over to the religious leaders and to the authorities, and they put Jesus on trial. The time came where Jesus was led to a cross. Even though Jesus did nothing wrong, they treated Jesus like he was a guilty criminal. He was nailed to a wooden cross after he had been beaten and spat upon and mistreated. Jesus suffered on the cross. The cross was a horrible place for Jesus to suffer. But the worst thing about the cross wasn't the physical pain. God the Father judged his son while he died on the cross. What did he judge him for? Jesus did nothing wrong. You're right. 
but God placed our sins on Jesus and he suffered for us at the cross. As Jesus suffered on the cross, he was able to say to his father, it is finished, and he died. He satisfied all the demands of his father. And as Jesus died, they buried him. They laid the body of the Lord Jesus into a tomb. He was buried in this place. You could imagine how sad all of the disciples of Jesus were during this time. They were very sad. But Jesus did say something to his disciples many times when he was alive. And that is, he will die, he will be buried, and on the third day, he will come alive. He will raise up from the grave. He will rule again. Well, the time came on the third day as some ladies came to visit this tomb. The stone had been rolled away. And as the disciples had even come to visit it, Peter ran inside the tomb and discovered the body of Jesus was gone. Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead. The grave, death, could not hold him down. Now that the tomb is empty, a number of days passes, in fact, 40 days, and Jesus gathers with his disciples along with a crowd of around 500 people. And Jesus, on the Mount of Olives, ascends to the glory of heaven. Jesus is alive, the tomb is empty, and he has gone to the right hand of the throne of God. What is Jesus doing at the right hand of the throne of God? We learn that at the right hand of God's throne, Jesus is praying for his people. He is praying that God would protect us and that we would be pure. He is also preparing a place for us in heaven, the new paradise, and we will learn about that soon. But what I want you to remember, boys and girls, is Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again. Then he ascended to the glory of heaven. Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the great prophet, priest, and king, is alive. And we are now going to learn what happens after Jesus went to heaven. And it's all about the church. <laughs>